I've got the data that I downloaded off of this website and I cleaned it up and I chose just a subset of it that I can use to illustrate how to analyze it. This is from the survey that here is on the web and see the survey is about beliefs and behaviors, primarily political type stuff. And they do provide the survey results, but they provide the results in terms of just what percent of people answered each question. And I'm going to show you how to use Jamovi the, to analyze the data. It's an open source free program and get much more meaningful and professional answers. So here's the data that I'm using. And I've deleted a lot of the columns just to make it easier when we go to analyze this. But as you can see, a lot of the questions are about what category people would put themselves in, their education level, relig what religion they are, um, whether they identify here as an aspiring rationalist, etc. And I recoded some of the questions. These are categorical. What category are you in? And then there were other questions that I would call ordinal, like um, depression, questions about depression. And I made these ordinal and recoded them where I don't have this condition and neither does anybody in my family would be the lowest number and the highest number would be I have a formal diagnosis. And the same with whether or not you're a vegetarian. No, I put as the lowest number, working your way up to, yes, I'm a vegan, which is the highest number. We're going to use Jamovi, which is an open source software package. And if you don't already have it, go to jamovi.org and download it. And then I'm also going to show you how to use GPT, the AI, to ask the right questions to get help understanding your data and what tests you need to run and how to interpret them and how you might write up your results. I guess I should show you how to take care of the fact that some of these numbers are text formatted. And now it could be, see if they're to the left, they're text instead of numeric. Maybe we can change them like this. Nope. A lot of times data that you run get off some database. You can't change it using the those Excel features, but here's what you do in that case. Just put a one somewhere and copy it. And then copy the numbers that you need to change to numeric instead of text. Go to Paste Special and say Multiply. Now I've copied that one, so now it's going to multiply these by one. And see, now they're numeric. They switch to the right. That's how you can tell they're numeric. The first interesting thing we're going to do is a factor analysis. So open Jamovi and then open your data set. And I've got mine in here. Let me find it. Okay, just browse your way to it and open it. it. Takes a minute. So I won't make you watch it open. So here the data has been read into Jamovi and it shows us the data here on the left. And this is just a subset of the data because this data set is so big, it would take forever to read the whole thing in. So I read in a lot of the questions that are rated where they gave a scale and asked like on a scale of one to five, how much do you hate Donald Trump? What are you, your feelings about abortion, et cetera? Um, and then some of these things are categories. The first thing we're going to do is a factor analysis and see up here on the menu. A lot of these things I clicked on the plus and downloaded more modules. I don't remember if factor analysis was already there or if you need to go get it. But if you need to go get it, just click on this plus. It'll show you all the plugins and get factor analysis. Now factor analysis is really interesting. There's a couple different kinds, principal component, exploratory, and confirmatory. I'll, we'll do an exploratory first, and let me explain what that is. An exploratory factor analysis helps us identify underlying factors or constructs that explain the interrelatedness of the set of variables. And it allows us to have a way to group similar survey items together into factors. So we can simplify the data and identify key themes. 
And like, for example, if you had a survey about environmental conservatism and you had survey items like, I recycle regularly, I try to conserve energy at home, I'm concerned about the impact of climate change, etc., the factor analysis would help us identify that those things are interrelated to each other around the underlying theme of environmental conservatism. So what this, when we do an exploratory factor analysis, it'll help us identify the key themes in the data. And you may not know what the themes are. I mean, in that example, it was obvious that those are related, but there could be things related like a religion that's related to a certain political behavior or something that there's an underlying factor that correlate those. So the exploratory factor analysis will help us identify those things and can be very interesting. So let me show you how to do one. Now to do a factor analysis, we've got to have continuous data. And we are going to look at not the categories, but the questions where people rated things. Like this question was political interest from one to five with no interest being one and very interested being five. But see, it came in as nominal. And whenever they have this little icon of a Venn diagram, that means it's, it's nominal, meaning it's just categories. It's treating it as categories. We need to change this to continuous and do that for any of the variables that are of the ratings and our numbers because it looks like they came in as nominal and we need to make them continuous. So I'm on data and I just click on it. You edit and you can go in here and change the data type. Okay, now I have made all of my rating data continuous. So I want to go to analysis, choose factor, and we're going to do an exploratory analysis. So here it gives me all my variables on the left and the ones I want to put into this analysis, I put a, just select them and bring them over. And they are all the ones that are continuous. So let's see, I can do several at once. We have a lot of data here. Okay. It takes a little while to run this, it's actually not very long, but let's let's ask it for five factors with a minimum loading of 0.5. You don't, if, if it's below 0.5, it's weakly a part of that factor. We want it to be at least 0.5. These assumptions tests, they tell you whether or not your data lends itself to doing this kind of factor analysis. So we want to see those because some data doesn't, like there is no underlying structure to it. So now we just are patient and we wait. Oh, look, it's done. Oh, let's sort it. I want to sort it so it's easier to read. So this tells us these are one underlying factor, which kind of makes sense when you see them. Life satisfaction, social satisfaction, mood, job satisfaction, romantic, and that stops there. That's one factor. So those things could be put together to portray, eliminate, reduce this data and portray this factor. And these would be what you would weight the responses by. You would multiply this number by the life satisfaction answer, etc., and add them together to get this component, this component one, basic general satisfaction. Uh, two, Ooh, and this one's negatively correlated, but maybe, let's see what it is. Uh, minimum wage. No, risk Risk didn't sh show up. Some aren't in a factor. Risk isn't. It's global warming that is negatively correlated with the rest of the things in its component. 
Now let's look at the Bartlett's test, the assumption checks. These you would report if you're running this up. The Bartlett's test of sphericity is significant, but P less than 0 0.001, so it passes this test. I don't think you have to do them both, but why not? And then the overall KMO measure is the top one here, and that is above 0.6. So that also indicates that this data does lend itself to doing this kind of exploratory analysis, the factor analysis. And I just want to point out down here the icons, this little bar chart and the ruler. Ruler means you can put continuous data in here. The bar chart means you could put ordinal data. Ordinal data is data that has a specific order to it, even though it's categories. So what do you do with this data? You can you can edit in here and write notes and things if you want to. I would go in here, right click on it, and copy it and paste it into Excel so you get a better handle on it. So let me get to Excel. And it pastes in kind of funny where every other column is empty. So you have to clean that up some. But this would help you look at it and write about component one. Are, is comprised of these items and then look at them and try to figure out what's the underlying structure that these are all related to. This would be some sort of life satisfaction I think. That's why that's the highest correlated there. Overall satisfaction. These, these are not as obvious and that makes it more interesting. Risk is not your risk averse versus risky is just not related to the underlying structure of this data. That would mean that there isn't a kind of per a certain kind of person that rates a certain way on the riskiness. But these things are related and they all reflect some component, which is interesting because it's whether or not you think we should make minimum wage higher relates to your attitude about abortion. Well, I guess that makes sense. And feminism, oppositely. Oh, because look, this was scaled oppositely. One is very and five is none. So that's why it came out negative. So these things all reflect a single underlying factor. So what you would do is you would give that component a name and then create a new variable using these weights. And before you analyze the data to look to see do the different categories of people, are they different from each other on these components? And see if we used all the data, it's so much data that you can't wrap your head around it. But by clustering it with components, it makes it much easier to understand. Well, look, loving or hating Donald Trump is not a part of this. It doesn't fit the, the structure. Anxiety goes with depression and ADHD. Oh, no, ADHD is out. Now, how do we use the chatbot, the AI, to help us with this? You'll forget well, what your assumption checks are for or what the thresholds are. You don't have to Google it or look it up. Just keep this open and type it in there. What are my assumption checks for when I do an exploratory factor analysis and how do I interpret them? And he'll just tell you. I guess it's a he. Um, that your KMO value of 0.6 or higher is con generally considered acceptable. They tell you how to interpret it here. The Bartlett's test of sphericity indicates the correlation matrix is factorable. And this will help you write it up. You can even type in here, how do I write this up? And you'll get a little paragraph of how to write this up. Okay, we're creating a new variable that is going to be the first component from, made from these first, the first factor. And so I went to data, add over here, a computed variable and I'm inserting it. And then I typed in point, that's the first number, 0.957 times and you want to click there and double click over here on the variable rather than writing it because that way it gets written correctly. And so this is just a linear combination that I created of the first factor and all of the loadings. 
So it finished. It computed component one. We have a new variable. And you would do the same for component two over here, your second factor. These are the numbers you would use for the linear combination of these variables. You just write the formula the same way I wrote that one. And what would you do with this information once you have your, your exploratory factor analysis done? Well, you look at what is in each factor. Look to see, is there a theoretical basis for why these things cluster together and are reflecting the same underlying factor or same underlying component? And that in itself is an interesting thing. And uh, then you might also want to look to see, now that we have these components and we could reduce the variables down to just a set of five components that are, reflect some underlying structure, we can look at the different groups to see how do they differ on these components, like different kinds of people, but different religions, male, female, the different categories that of people that are indicated in this survey data. And you can export your results several different ways. You can, if you right click all, you can export as a PDF and save it. It'll create a PDF of all these results. You can copy and then paste into a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. You can edit in here to write notes about what you did. And you'll want to save this so that when you open it, you don't have to recode everything.